This morning we're talking about police funding on the ballot, what local officials and taxpayers say that money should be used for, and what it all means for you. When you live in the nursing home, it's like you're basically a caged pig. Plus, new research on the disparities the Hmong population faces in nursing homes. Good morning, everyone. Happy Friday. Thanks for tuning in to News 3 Now this morning. I'm Chris Stanford. Kyrie is off this morning. All right, we've got a little bit of rain overnight. Let's see if it amounted to much. Meteorologist Fanna Brito is out on the patio. Hey there. Hey, good morning. We did see just about three tenths of an inch in Madison, so not a lot of rain. That's just because it didn't last that long. And in fact, northern Illinois and central Illinois, that's where the brunt of the activity was late yesterday evening into those overnight hours. Those showers continuing to break up now, though. But across southern Wisconsin, like I mentioned, just above three tenths in Madison, Janesville, saw just over a quarter for Atkinson about two tenths the Platteville area which by the way is included in the severe drought though that was according to last week's drought monitor update and still this week's which came out yesterday they need the rain they saw the least amount just seven hundredths of an inch we do have more rain in the forecast we're dry through the weekend but we'll talk about when rain will return to the forecast and even a chance of maybe some stronger storms near the area also talk about the halloween forecast next week that's all coming up a little later chris all right savannah thank you in our three for the people coverage this morning, former President Trump returns to Wisconsin next week. The Trump Vance campaign announcing that Trump plans to hold a rally in Green Bay on Wednesday. It's scheduled for 6 p.m. at the Rush Center. Doors open at 2 o'clock. He's expected to speak about inflation. Meanwhile, Trump's running mate J.D. Vance will be in Racine next week. The Ohio senator will speak at the Racine Memorial Hall on Monday around 530 he is expected to focus on Trump's economic plans. Senator Vance is also expected to encourage Wisconsinites to vote early. The Harris Walls campaign responding to the upcoming visits by saying Wisconsinites know that Trump threatens the stability and security of hardworking families to serve himself. That's why Green Bay's Republican state senator Robert Cowles joined other Republicans, independents and Democrats to endorse Vice President Harris. Wisconsin Senate candidate Eric Hubde will be in Oregon today. He'll be joined by politician Tulsi Gabbard. They're looking to bolster support for former President Trump among the LGBTQ community. They'll be at the Five Bridges Farm at 2 o'clock this afternoon. Meanwhile, Secretary of Transportation Pete Buttigieg is scheduled to visit Green Bay, Appleton, Oshkosh, and Fond du Lac on Saturday. He's expected to focus on lowering consumer costs and protecting reproductive freedoms. Vice President Harris heading to the Republican stronghold of Texas today for a rally in Houston. She's joining singer Beyonce. Harris's campaign and has taken on uh, Beyonce's song Freedom as its anthem and has done so since the Democratic National Convention. Well, with 11 days to go until the election, we are laying out the referendum question in Fitchburg. Our Michelle Renee Quinn is here to uh, let us know what voters need to know. Good morning. Good morning, Chris. That's right. The question asks Fitchburg residents to support a $3.6 million tax increase. Now, for the average homeowner of Fitchburg, that's approximately a monthly increase of $25. And that's also a near $300 increase for the year. I spoke with former Fitchburg mayor and retired police officer Tom Clotter, who says this ask is too much. A added so much fluff to it. I wrote budgets for the city. I mean, you're talking to a mayor who wrote the budget, and we have now a mayor that their spending is, I'll say, out of control. On the other hand, the District 4 alderman says this is to keep up with city services like police and firefighters. Would ask for kind of a reconsideration and a pause to say, what city services do I really value, and am I willing to take the risk in that service level dropping? Stick around for the next half hour. I'll be back with the full story. All right, Michelle Renee, thank you for that. Absolutely. Well, both the city of Madison and taxpayers uh, spending more on police than any other city service. With an election and a city referendum approaching, some taxpayers feel this money could be going elsewhere. Dane County Sheriff Calvin Barrett says the political rhetoric around law enforcement funding has real effects. There's this, uh, uh, you know, the, the thought of defunding the police. And so when you take away positions from us, that doesn't allow us to continue to have a high level of service. Uh, Madison Mom, though, involved in community groups like Police Civilian Oversight Board and Moms on a Mission say it's not about defunding, rather refunding other avenues. 
I think what's going to create more safety is making sure that people have more job opportunities and that they have um, more affordable housing. Police funding is on your November 5th Madison referendum. If the referendum fails, the police department will see a $300,000 reduction. If it passes, the department will continue operations as normal. Wisconsin is the home of the third largest population of Hmong Americans in the U.S. But a new UW-Madison case study shows that for aging members of this community, there's a gap in the quality of life in nursing homes. Our Armand Rahman reports. This work is also personal. And this work was nostalgic and not in a good way for medical anthropologist Macy Tao, who is ethnically Hmong. You know, my aunt was actually doing very poorly because all she was... She was restricted to eating only the nursing home food, and so she was starving a lot of the time, as well as my grandmother. When doing a case study on a nursing home in Minnesota, home to the second largest Hmong population in the country, she found things have not improved. You know, the residents, you know, shared with me that, like, when you live in the nursing home, it's like you're basically a caged pig. Along with a lack of access to culturally appropriate food, the biggest barrier to care was language. The fact that they can't communicate to people um, about what they need, you know, basic things like a shower. Um, there was this Hmong resident, he actually was a little more fluent in English, and he felt like he had to take it upon himself to really take care of all the other residents and to speak for them. And he already has his own disabilities, and, you know, so that, that was really heartbreaking. Currently, Dane County's Aging and Disability Resource Center has two Hmong language specialists on staff, one of whom is Thao. The county's proposed budget for next year includes another Hmong interpreter position, which is getting a lot of community support. So they're out in force to ask to make sure that we kept uh, that part of the proposal intact uh, because there is a need, especially among among um, more of the senior members, the elders in the Hmong community. Tao says it is a basic first step, but more is needed. Greater attention is needed to think about nursing homes. Um, it's one of the most racially segregated healthcare system in the U.S., right? And a lot of that is, you know, you see that in terms of resources. Arman Rahman reporting there. If you want to voice your support for the county's proposed budget, including the Hmong interpreter position, there is another public hearing on October 28th at 6 p.m. Hmong New Year celebrations in Madison begin next weekend. Well, it is UW homecoming week, and tonight is the big parade. If you're traveling through the Isthmus, here are the traffic impacts. Uh, so the route for the parade runs from Gilman at Wisconsin Avenue to State Street down to Lake Street. Closures begin at 4 p.m. They're going to be closed from uh, pretty much 5 to 7.30. The parade starts at 6. Savannah, anybody head downtown tonight? How's the weather going to treat them? Yeah, I think the weather is going to be in the 50s as far as temperatures go. Clear skies. It'll be a little breezy, though. That'll be the big thing. So just be sure okay. to maybe dress with a sweatshirt or lighter jacket. But it doesn't look bad. All right. Thank you, Savannah. You're welcome. And as mentioned, it is UW homecoming weekend, and that means it's time to fill the hill. We're live on Bascom Hill this morning where you can see the pink flamingos are going up. We're going to talk a little bit more about the message and how you can be part of the fun when News 3 Now this morning continues. You're watching News 3 Now this morning, brought to you by Toyota. Dear road rivals, no truck on the road drives value like the Tundra. Day after day, mile after mile, it all adds up to big savings under the hood. What's under yours? Toyota Tundra. Right now, lease a new Tundra for $4.79 a month or get 3.99% APR for 72 months on a new Tundra. Find yours at Toyota.com. Toyota. Let's go places. I think we're probably spending too much, throwing too much money on our southern border. Last month, fentanyl killed my childhood friend. Drugs and criminals are pouring into our communities because Tammy Baldwin voted to open our border and defund our police. I moved here from New York to protect my family, but Tammy's bringing her New York values to Wisconsin. Tammy Baldwin is dangerous. I'm Eric Uppie and I approve this message. Join my team and give today.
We need leadership focused on addressing rising costs, prioritizing quality schools. But Elizabeth Robbie, endorsed by a group that would take power away from local school boards and put state bureaucrats in charge. And Robbie's backed by extremists who wanted to defund the police. Elizabeth Robbie, dangerously out of touch. Todd Novak is our trusted independent voice, helping families with rising costs, delivering funding for local law enforcement and emergency services, investing in rural broadband and our schools. Todd Novak for Assembly. My husband and I were elated to find out that we would be having another baby. But after many tests, my doctors agreed that we had to terminate the pregnancy. It was the worst day of my life. You should know that Eric Hubdi supports laws that stop me and my doctor from making that decision. And that's a ban with no exceptions in cases of rape or incest. It's a ban that could turn doctors into criminals. He opposes abortion, period. When Senate is responsible for the content of this ad, I'm Kamala Harris, and I approve this message. Donald Trump makes a lot of promises, but we can be sure of one thing. If he wins, he'll ignore all checks that rein in a president's power. It's all in Trump's Project 2025 agenda. What does that mean for you? Higher cost on groceries, cuts to Social Security and Medicare, more tax breaks for billionaires, and a national abortion ban putting women's health at risk. A second Trump term, more unhinged, unstable, and unchecked. Are record high energy costs putting a squeeze on your fixed or limited incomes? While you haven't asked for it, the Keep Wisconsin Warm Cool Fund and your local energy assistance providers are here to help. No Wisconsin resident should ever have to face the challenge of living without heat or power or face homelessness. For a hand up, apply today. They've had three and a half years to fix the border. Why hasn't she done it? Four years, radical Kamala Harris created the border crisis. Thousands of accused murderers, rapists, even terrorists pour in. Each crime they commit makes American victims. Innocent victims of Kamala's open border agenda. They were bludgeoned, raped, strangled, stabbed, shot, and murdered. Kamala created the border crisis. She won't fix it now. Make America Great Again, Inc. is responsible for the content of this advertising. You're watching News 3 Now This Morning, moving forward. 6-11 here on your Friday. It is UW Homecoming Weekend, and the Badgers getting ready to play under the lights tomorrow at Camp Randall. This morning, our Josh Breider is on Bascom Hill, where they're ready to fill the hill for a good cause. Morning, Josh. How are you? Hey, good morning, Chris. Happy homecoming weekend. The time has come, and it's, of course, one of our favorite traditions. I'm feeling a little extra accessorized this morning. Take a look at my fanny pack, the official Fill the Hill fanny pack. I also have a cute little friendship bracelet, and Mark can zoom in on onto that. So this morning, of course, we're having a lot of fun, and you have a part or a chance to be able to be a part of this fun. Betsy Popelka Masnick joining us with the Wisconsin Foundation and Alumni Association. Betsy, good morning to you. Good morning. We're so happy to be here. Oh my gosh, this is one of my favorite mornings, and of course, we're working to fill the hill, and you have the pink flamingo in hand this morning. So what is the uh, mission and message about this? Yeah, so we plant a pink flamingo for every gift made on uwflamingos.com, and it's really to meet the immediate needs of the university. So we spread the flamingo cheer and fill up Bascom Hill in celebration of the power of giving. And of course, you know, Homecoming Weekend is so special because it's getting the whole community together what makes UW-Madison so special. That's right, yeah. Our, our alumni, our friends, our supporters, everyone comes together around the Pink Flamingo and helps us fill the hill and spread the impact of giving. So the history here is so special, too, because obviously Bascom Hill, I mean, this is such a tradition. But seeing these Pink Flamingos by the end of the day covering this hill is pretty fantastic. It's so fun. It's a great tradition we bring back from the Pill and Shovel Party when they planted 1,008 flamingos on the hill on the first day of class back in 1979. So to see where this has gone over the years is pretty incredible. And every dollar that is raised for you guys goes right back into your mission. That's right. Yeah, there are over 100 causes you can support that impact every corner of the university. So you can go to uwflamingos.com and find a cause that you can support today. And of course, this is just one day that you guys are doing, but you guys are here 365 days a year and are always looking for that support. That's right. Yeah. Private support means so much to the university and really helps to maintain the, the excellence. 
Talk a little bit about the partnership because obviously, you know, you have the Wisconsin Foundation, you have the Alumni Association. There's a lot of uh, partners right here at the university that make this happen. That's right. Yeah, we really are coming together to bring together the Badger community to support the university and keep it going strong. So plenty of time, obviously, to make a difference here today. Uh, remind folks what they can do to help you guys out here with Fill the Hill today. Yeah, go to uwflamingos.com by 5 p.m. to make your gift. If you make a gift of $350 or more, we'll actually mail you one of these pink flamingos as well. You actually get one of those. We'll send you one and a friendship bracelet. Oh, speaking of friendship bracelets, I know you're all kind of loaded up here too. This is kind of cool. This is a little different for you guys this year. This is, yeah. This is a special commemorative uh, friendship bracelet just for this year. We are in our friendship era. And uh, thank you for the fanny pack. I yeah. feel like I'm rocking it this morning. I you think look great. I don't think I've ever had a fanny pack before. <laughs> it looks really good. <laughs> Good on you. <laughs> well, Betsy, thank you so much. And let's make a difference here with Phil the Hill. I have everything you need to know, including links up on channel3000.com, Chris. So folks can go up there right now and let's get this covered. You have until the end of the day today. So Bascom Hill is going to be looking a little bit different here in a matter of hours. What do you think of my fanny pack, Chris? Oh, can I Josh, rock you it can pull, or what? You can pull anything off. I think it looks great. It looks good. <laughs> See if you can snag one for me. I don't think I Thanks, can pull it off, but Josh certainly does. Thanks, buddy. Oh, I think you could. Right, right over that suit. How about? <laughs> Perfect. All right. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Josh is always looking for inspiration in the 608. Got an idea for him? Reach out and let him know about it. All right, Savannah, what do you think? Fanny pack look good on Josh? Yeah, I think so. I like the pink. It definitely adds to it, too. But everyone's going to be wearing red or white tomorrow for the Badgers game. Temperatures, they're not really going to be a problem. A little on the cooler side, but actually seasonal all day tomorrow. For kickoff, though, Camp Randall tomorrow, the Badgers versus Penn State at 6.30 p.m. I do think we'll be pushing or very close to that 50-degree mark. Most of us probably down to the upper 40s. Halftime, though, in Madison, 46 by the end of the fourth quarter the end of the game I expect temperatures to be down close to that 40 degree mark we did pick up some rain overnight no rain in the forecast this weekend we need it our next chance holding off until next Wednesday this is our updated drought monitor that came out yesterday no change as far as southwest all the way back to Platteville they were upgraded to a severe drought last week but the change that goes all the way up to Prairie du Chien now so that orange color that's a level two out of four the rest of the area also was upgraded to a moderate drought. We did see most of Dane County last week get added to that. Now that expanded further. So we still need a lot of rain, a soaking rain. This is what we picked up overnight. We got three tenths of an inch just over that in Madison, about a quarter in Janesville, two tenths near that in Fort Atkinson. Platteville, though, that area was actually increased to a severe drought last week. I show that orange color. They got those areas southwest of Madison picked up the least amount of rain, and that's the area that needs it the most. They only actually got seven hundredths of an inch overnight, but we're drying up. Few sprinkles can't be ruled out. That's better chance towards Waukesha or Milwaukee that saw that rain a little later, but nonetheless, we're clearing pretty quickly. Sunshine returns as temperatures warm into the mid 50s by 10 a.m. We'll top out near that 60 degree mark again this afternoon. Most most of us are looking at the lower 60s today, mid 50s tomorrow, so it'll definitely be cooler on Saturday compared to the second half of this upcoming weekend on Sunday, but that 56 is actually still a degree above average or average high 55 for this time of year. We're tracking another chance of rain, like I mentioned, Wednesday into early next Thursday morning, which is Halloween. I think we could see a couple of showers early, and yes, we could even see storms Wednesday as temperatures are going to be warming up. It'll have to kind of depend on on how severe weather ingredients line up, but I do think we could be talking about a couple stronger storms, at least near the area Wednesday and Wednesday night. All right, Savannah, thank you. 617, do you feel guilty when you take time off of work? You're definitely not alone if you do. A survey from Kick Resume uh, asked people from Wisconsin and Europe, and they found that one in three Americans feel guilty for taking time off. In Europe, that's 18%. For those that don't feel guilty at all, nearly half of Europeans don't feel bad about taking a holiday compared to a third of Americans. If you're looking for some time off, uh, prepared to uh, spend a little bit more. If you're thinking about going to Disney, Magic Kingdom tickets for November and December 2025 are set to hit $199 on some days. That's a $10 hike from the most expensive ticket this year. Good news is for the other months of 2025, prices are holding steady. The holiday gift giving season is approaching and a new law in Florida makes thefts of stolen goods worth $40 or more a felony. It's an attempt to crack down on porch pirates. Several states designate porch piracy as a felony. 
These state laws mainly target deliveries from companies like Amazon and FedEx. It's already a federal crime uh, to steal something from the U.S. Postal Service. Still ahead, a new discount for Prime members, how you can save on gas. Coming up in our next half hour, the latest on the McDonald's E. coli outbreak. Before we go to break, here's a look at your gas prices this morning. We're back right after this. on News 3 Now. I'm Joan Balwig, and I'm here to set the record straight. I support birth control, the life and health of mothers, extending postpartum care, and fertility treatments, including IVF. I'm Joan Balwig. I have always fought for Wisconsin moms, and I always will. The kindness, the efficiency, the respect was amazing. From start to finish, they will take care of you. Everybody is just so kind and everybody's so cheerful. I just never worked with a company where everybody seems to get along and they're all happy to be working for Cardinal. Cardinal is the place to go for any type of work that you need done around your home. I never hesitate with family, friends, neighbors to recommend Cardinal and nobody has come back to me and said I was wrong. This is Senator Tammy Baldwin. This is her life partner, Maria Brisbane, a Wall Street exec who makes millions advising the super rich how to make money off industries Tammy regulates. Tammy doesn't get home to Wisconsin most weekends. She'd rather be in New York at Maria's $7 million condo. That's why New Yorkers have given Tammy over $1.3 million. Tammy Baldwin's not Wisconsin senator anymore. She's the third senator from New York. I'm Eric Covdy, and I approve this message. Insanity. Doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. Would you have done something differently than President Biden during the past four years? Uh, there is not a thing that comes to mind. Kamala wouldn't change a thing. Their weakness invited wars, welfare for illegals, while Americans struggle. Now Kamala wants higher taxes on top of higher prices. We can't afford four more years of Kamala. I'm Donald J. Trump, and I approve this message. How extreme is Todd Novak? He thinks a woman's most private medical decisions should be up to him. Todd Novak has a 100% anti-abortion rating. He supports letting politicians ban abortion with no exceptions for rape, incest, or to save a woman's life. And Todd Novak authored the law to ban abortion here in Wisconsin. Elizabeth Grabe will defend abortion rights. She knows private medical decisions are between women and their doctors. My name is Jack Frank. I'm a retired paper mill worker in the valley here, and I work for Copuson Bus part-time on the side. I've had my own route now here for the last three, four years, and the kids on it are great. Flexible hours, they work with you in many different ways. If you've got something going, they, they, they accommodate you or they try to get somebody to run your road. Colson treats you decent, you know, all the years I worked here. It's a great place to work. Have you heard Eric Humpty? I am totally opposed to abortion. I am totally opposed to politicians telling women what we can do. Extremists all over the country have passed abortion bans. Criminal penalties for doctors. No exceptions for rape or incest. Women are dying just trying to get health care. There are even restrictions in Wisconsin. This has to stop. I am totally opposed to abortion. We are totally opposed to Eric Humpty. I'm Tammy Baldwin, and I approve this message. Sarah Kieski, she supports lifting revenue limits, allowing property tax rates to skyrocket unchecked. Kieski's backers want to ban natural gas to heat our homes, driving utility bills through the roof. That's Kieski's record, expensive and extreme. Oh. Oh, I said well, good morning, everyone. <laughs> Thank you, Linda. This is a beautiful picture. I love seeing sunrises. She says the morning sky from Edgerton. What color would you call that? I would call it beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> the color out of there are too beautiful. many. Simple. We've got some fuchsias in the top. Then we bring in that blue. Oh, We've got the sunset candy. orange. If or you're I a think, Hunger Games fan, yeah. this is Peta Malark's favorite orange okay. color. There you go. Okay. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Linda. Appreciate it. 
Trending this morning, a uh, new snack or maybe a dessert. We'll figure it out. Toll House is giving out cookie nachos. Yeah. It's a cookie nacho kit inspired by a TikTok trend and uh, Peyton Manning. It comes with chocolate chip cookie dough, three varieties of morsels, chip-shaped cookie cutters, and a $25 gift card to purchase the nacho-inspired toppings of your choice. You'll have to wait until November 6th, though, to enter. Go to tollhouse.com slash cookie nachos. And if you uh, are entering the contest, just put your name as News 3. There you go. So there you try. go, yeah. <laughs> Mm. They, they, they just look like kind of triangle shaped cookies here yeah. that you can put different toppings on. But. Any shape okay. cookie is right. good. You guys, I can I can really make us some <laughs> triangle shaped cookies and we can make our own cookie. Not, we don't yeah. have to have the True. kit to make them. We can still. All right, we're going to make them regardless. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, if you have Amazon Prime, and we know a lot of you do, Guilty there's a new way to use your Prime membership to save on gas. Members can now buy fuel from any participating BP or Amico. To get the get discount, you got to link your Amazon account to Earnify. That is BP's loyalty app. If you do that, Amazon says you'll save 10 cents a gallon. So this got me thinking, you know, a lot of these gas stations, they all have like loyalty yeah. programs, apps, you know, things to go along with it. Like, do people like, do, do you ladies do this? Um, sometimes it just seems like too much work. It's like, oh, I got to give all my information. Yeah. I got to sign up for something else, a new name and password. I'm a part more of room on my phone. That's it. Okay. And no. we used to have a lot of Casey's where I was from, but there's, I mean, there's still Casey's up here, but not there as is. much. There's more quick trips and. I have a 42-gallon yeah. tank, so <laughs> any penny I can save on gas is a penny I'm going to save on and gas. And doesn't do good on mileage, right? No, no, yeah. she doesn't. So. No, so. <laughs> well, 10 cents a gallon, I mean, that's, that's, it adds, that up. adds up. It does adds add up. up. I used to yeah. add, use this app called Upside, and it would tell okay. you, like, where the most, um, low expensive, okay. like the cheapest, most affordable gas prices were, and then you could go there and hook that up. Is that so, still a thing? Well, not in Missouri where I was before, okay. so I haven't really checked out Wisconsin, Wisconsin yet, but... Okay, we'll have the report back. Yeah, I will. I'll check all right. it out. All right, well, guys, we got some much-needed rain last night. Not a lot, but we'll talk about when more rain's in the forecast coming up. News 3 Now First Warm Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. The other side is lying to scare you. Truth is, Joan Balwig is a champion for women's health care. She fought hard to expand health care access for postpartum moms and supports access for IVF and birth control. We're voting for Joan Balwig because she votes for women like us. You have a clear choice in this election. Senator Baldwin is a 38-year career politician. I'm a businessman and job creator. She supports taxpayer benefits for illegal immigrants. I'll close the border. Tammy wants to put guys and girls sports and in their bathrooms. I'll protect our daughters. Senator Baldwin abuses the political system. I'll fight the corruption. I'm Eric Covey and I prove this message. I'd be honored to have your vote. Create your dream kitchen with Clearview Cabinetry. With multi-purpose finishes and features to choose from, you'll be sure to find a style that's perfect for you. Get these La Home Kitchen Cabinets for $39.99.99 after rebate. Finish your project with countertops from Menards. From elegant to everyday options, we have what you need to update your living space. Take home pre-cut laminate countertops today, starting at $29.98 each after 11% rebate. Save big money at Menards. We hold the most powerful tool to make democracy work for black Americans, and that's our vote. Registering the vote takes less than 10 minutes. Help protect democracy. Go to myvote.wisconsin.gov to check your voter registration status. In-person absentee voting begins Tuesday, October 22nd. City of Beloit buses will provide free rides on election day. Let's be all in and vote on November 5th. Insanity. Doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. Would you have done something differently than President Biden during the past four years? Uh, there is not a thing that comes to mind. Kamala wouldn't change a thing. Their weakness invited wars, welfare for illegals, while Americans struggle. 
Now Kamala wants higher taxes on top of higher prices. We can't afford four more years of Kamala. I'm Donald J. Trump, and I approve this message. Eric Hovde's trying to scare you. The truth is no sex change surgeries take place on minors in Wisconsin. Zero. And Tammy Baldwin didn't give funding to a transgender clinic. It's actually a youth homeless shelter. Eric Hovde knows that. But he's a billionaire banker who thinks he can lie about anything, including falsely attacking Tammy Baldwin by questioning her personal life. Wisconsin's better than Eric Hovde. I'm Tammy Baldwin, and I approve this message. Sarah Kieski, she supports lifting revenue limits, allowing property tax rates to skyrocket unchecked. Kieski's backers want to ban natural gas to heat our homes, driving utility bills through the roof. That's Kieski's record, expensive and extreme. This morning, McDonald's sued over the E. coli outbreak. The case an infected customer is making, plus what ingredients might have been tainted. Also this morning, we talked to people in Fitchburg about that city's referendum. You'll hear the reasons for their vote. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to News 3 Now this morning. On a Friday, I'm Chris Stanford. Kyrie Ann Lee is off today. Got a little bit of rain overnight. We really needed some. Let's check in with meteorologist Savannah Rito out on the patio with uh, just how much we got, enough to make a difference here? I don't think we unfortunately got enough to make a huge impact or difference on the drought monitor. That'll come out next Thursday with the data we had today, but we also have more rain in the forecast that'll take us up to Halloween, but that data will not get factored in for next Thursday's update because it only takes into consideration data prior to Tuesday morning. So this is what we got overnight. We got three tenths of an inch in Madison just over over a quarter in Janesville, so Dane County, Madison, and areas south down towards the Wisconsin Illinois border. Those places picked up the most amount of rain, still not nearly as much as across northern Illinois and even central Illinois. They even had some storms overnight. Fort Atkinson got two tenths about that. Platteville, who by the way is included in a severe drought, that's a two out of four, picked up the least amount when they need the most. They only had seven hundredths of an inch of rain. We'll talk about that rain that we're going to see in the Halloween and how much we could see if that'll take us into trick-or-treating hours for the kiddos. That's coming up a little later, Chris. All right, Savannah, thank you. To our top story this morning, Public Health Madison, Dane County, urging community members to throw out pizza from a local restaurant. The place in question is famous Yeti's Pizza in Stoughton. Since Monday, the pizzeria served pizza contaminated with THC. Officials say the contamination was unintentional. Possible THC related symptoms though include dizziness, increased blood pressure, anxiety, vomiting and sleepiness. Public Health says that it sent a questionnaire to those who reported possible exposure and that'll help them with their investigation. We have a link to that form at channel3000.com. McDonald's is now on the receiving end of a lawsuit. It's over the E. coli outbreak linked to the quarter pounder. The outbreak has sickened dozens and killed one. The lawsuit cites a Colorado man who ate at his local McDonald's earlier this month and then two days later got sick and ended up in the ER. The man's lawsuit accuses McDonald's of product liability, negligence, and breach of implied warranties. The FDA says beef patties or slivered onions are the likely source. Consumers go to restaurants not expecting to get poisoned if it is found that the onion supplier supplied them contaminated onions. So they can say, yes, it's my fault. I served you the hamburger, but the onion supplier needs to pay for it. The CDC believes the onset dates for this disease are between September 27th and October 11th. We now know the name of the man who died when he fell from a boom truck in Rock County. It happened Saturday morning at the 4-H fairgrounds. The medical examiner has identified the man as 59-year-old Timothy R. Gillitzer of Milton. The death came from his injury sustained in a 10-foot fall. A 62-year-old Janesville woman also fell. She survived. 632 in our three for the people coverage this morning. We have 11 days till the election and this morning we're taking a look at the referendum question in Fitchburg. Our Michelle Renee Quinn is here uh, to break down exactly what the city is asking for. Good morning. Good morning. And yeah, the question asks Fitchburg residents to support a three point the question asks Fitchburg residents to support a $3.6 million tax increase. So for the average homeowner, that's approximately a monthly increase of $25, which might not sound like a lot, but it's a yearly increase of almost $300. 
There are two widely differing feelings when it comes to the Fitchburg referendum. I will be voting yes. How are you voting? No, absolutely no. Tom Clotter is a former Fitchburg mayor and retired Fitchburg police officer. Clotter and several of his neighbors wrote a letter to the city asking people to vote no. They added so much fluff to it. There's so much extra money in here that it's like, wait a minute, folks, what are you doing? This is going to take a hit on the taxpayer. And another way they're trying to sell it is the wording. It is not a one-time deal. This will come on every tax bill. On the other hand, Fitchburg Alderwoman Nicole Vafadari has a different view. She says the 3.6 million tax increase would go toward public city services. It's really to keep up with city services like police, fire, um, some core uh, social services that the city offers to the citizens. As someone who used to oversee the budget, Clotter says spending has increased faster than the increased revenue. I wrote budgets for the city. I mean, you're talking to a mayor who wrote the budget and we have now a mayor that their spending is, I'll say, out of control. Meanwhile, Vafadari says this increase is to address the needs of a quickly growing city. God forbid there's a fire or I need a, a police officer to respond to my home, which, which uh, I have had before. I have two little kids. <laughs> and so um, they were there so quickly. My roads being resurfaced right now outside of my home. Um, I get my garbage picked up and my recycling. All of these things that really we can invest and make sure that the service level doesn't drop. I know it is a lot to ask and we did not make this decision lightly. Um, and we continue to steward your finances as responsibly as we can. So I would ask for kind of a reconsideration and a pause to say, what city services do I really value? And am I willing to take the risk in that service level dropping? If this referendum fails, which I hope it does, the city can just look at, you know, plan B. It just make it more affordable. Now, there will be one last information session that the city is hosting, and that will be virtual at 6 p.m. on Monday. What did the voters in Fitchburg uh, think about it whenever you asked them? Well, I was out on the street, mm -hmm. and we had some people who had some comments. We had one mother. She did wish to remain anonymous, mm -hmm. but she has three children, and she's a single mother, and she said that this is just another burden that she cannot handle right now. Mm -hmm. This is too much. So, so $300 a, uh, month. A, a month. A month. Uh, oh, a year, a year. Yes. $300 a year. But when the budgets are tight, you know, that's serious money. That right, that $25 a month is groceries, right. it's gas, it's getting the kids to school. So, yeah. But then you yeah. have the services on the other end of it. Um, all right, so, way to lay it all off for us. Thank yeah, you. Absolutely. All right, in uh, more Three for the People coverage this morning, the Wisconsin Elections Commission says local officials are still experiencing delays with printing absentee ballot labels. They say it's because of a system update on Wednesday. The WEC says the issue only affects how long it takes to print the labels. Not having a label does not invalidate absentee votes. It does require officials to handwrite voter information, which does take more time. The Wisconsin Elections Commission says there's no reason to blame a cyber attack. Uh, again, it was a system update. Commission staff are working together now with state partners to determine the cause and a fix. While early voting is underway in many states, election officials are combating misinformation. The swing state of Georgia says it fended off a cyber attack. Officials there believe it came from overseas. It's the latest in a slew of attempts by foreign adversaries to meddle in the 2024 election. Officials are also combating homegrown misinformation. They say it's intended to stoke fears of the election not being secure. There was an, a senior citizen voter who printed her ballot and said, oh, I didn't this isn't who I chose, and they followed the procedure. They went to the poll manager. They said, let's go over here and let, and we'll, we'll spoil this ballot. We'll let you vote again. She told a couple people that story. It turned into a post, and then it was picked up by other people and said, machines are flipping votes, which is nobody claimed that actually happened. Meanwhile, the U.S. Postal Service is battling claims of widespread fraud on mail-in ballots. The Postal Service maintains it can handle the influx of mail coming in for mail-in voting and that they're taking extraordinary measures to ensure all mail is delivered timely and securely. In other news this morning, the EPA is enacting stricter rules for lead paint dust. This applies to homes and child care facilities. Any level is now considered hazardous. Doctors say even low levels of lead exposure can be harmful, particularly to children. Even though lead's no longer an ingredient in paints, it's still in older buildings and homes. 
The charges are part of a broader federal effort to reduce lead exposure across the country. This weekend, you can hear from the Brewers' legendary radio commenter, Bob Euchre. He'll be featured on CBS Sunday Morning. John Wertheim of 60 Minutes will spend some time with Mr. Baseball himself. Again, that's on CBS Sunday Morning. It starts at 8 a.m. right here on WISC-TV. Savannah? Well, we're forecasting decent temperatures tomorrow. It'll be seasonal, cooler than what we have seen all week, though really we'll talk about the next chance of rain, too, coming up. And UW Homecoming Weekend is here. We're going to talk about those festivities happening, plus how you can help fill the hill for donations for the university. That's coming up next, live in the 608. I'm Joan Balwig, and I'm here to set the record straight. I support birth control, the life and health of mothers, extending postpartum care, and fertility treatments, including IVF. I'm Joan Balwig. I have always fought for Wisconsin moms, and I always will. I'm working harder than ever just to pay the bills and provide for my family. But here's what Kamala Harris thought my money should go to instead. Job training for illegal immigrants even after they commit crimes in America. Hotel rooms for illegal immigrants while our vets sleep on the street. Sex changes for illegal immigrants out of my pocket. Seriously, have these people lost their mind? Kamala Harris can never ever be our president. Preserve America PAC is responsible for the content of this advertising. You have a clear choice in this election. Senator Baldwin is a 38-year career politician. I'm a businessman and job creator. She supports taxpayer benefits for illegal immigrants. I'll close the border. Tammy wants to put guys and girls sports and in their bathrooms. I'll protect our daughters. Senator Baldwin abuses the political system. I'll fight the corruption. I'm Eric Covey and I prove this message. I'd be honored to have your vote. Insanity. Doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. Would you have done something differently than President Biden during the past four years? Uh, there is not a thing that comes to mind. Kamala wouldn't change a thing. Their weakness invited wars, welfare for illegals, while Americans struggle. Now Kamala wants higher taxes on top of higher prices. We can't afford four more years of Kamala. I'm Donald J. Trump, and I approve this message. They've had three and a half years to fix the border. Why hasn't she done it? Four years, radical Kamala Harris created the border crisis. Thousands of accused murderers, rapists, even terrorists pour in. Each crime they commit makes American victims. Innocent victims of Kamala's open border agenda. They were bludgeoned, raped, strangled, stabbed, shot, and murdered. Kamala created the border crisis. She won't fix it now. Make America Great Again, Inc. is responsible for the content of this advertising. Eric Hovde's trying to scare you. The truth is no sex change surgeries take place on minors in Wisconsin. Zero. And Tammy Baldwin didn't give funding to a transgender clinic. It's actually a youth homeless shelter. Eric Hovde knows that. But he's a billionaire banker who thinks he can lie about anything, including falsely attacking Tammy Baldwin by questioning her personal life. Wisconsin's better than Eric Hovde. I'm Tammy Baldwin, and I approve this message. I'm Kamala Harris, and I approve this message. Donald Trump makes a lot of promises, but we can be sure of one thing. If he wins, he'll ignore all checks that rein in a president's power. It's all in Trump's Project 2025 agenda. What does that mean for you? Higher cost on groceries, cuts to Social Security and Medicare, more tax breaks for billionaires, and a national abortion ban putting women's health at risk. A second Trump term, more unhinged, unstable, and unchecked. Sarah Kieski, she supports lifting revenue limits, allowing property tax rates to skyrocket unchecked. Kieski's backers want to ban natural gas to heat our homes, driving utility bills through the roof. That's Kieski's record, expensive and extreme. You're watching News 3 Now This Morning, moving forward. 
did see some showers overnight. Most activity was actually just to our South Madison and Janesville reporting some of the most amount of rain and even that's not a lot, but we did see just over three tenths in Madison, just over a quarter in Janesville, close to two tenths reported in Fort Atkinson and Platteville just saw seven hundredths of an inch. They're included in that severe drought that was updated last week. They needed the most amount of rain and that area southwest of Madison saw the least amount of rain, but more is in the forecast, not through the weekend. We're still going to be dry, but as we butt up to Halloween, that's when rain's going to return to the forecast. 51 in Madison, 50 in Stoughton, 50 degrees in Cross Plains. So Dane County reporting some of the warmer temperatures across southern Wisconsin this morning. 47 in the Dells, a little cooler though. Black River Falls and Camp Douglas under that 40 degree mark. We will see more widespread mid to even lower 30s overnight. I do think those lower lying areas, especially open areas too, could see widespread frost as temperatures will fall close to freezing level northwest of here in those areas. I think those fall into the 20s tonight and Saturday night. 56 tomorrow. The weekend as far as which day will be better. Sunday, we are going to see warmer temperatures, but even that 56 is a degree above average. Both days are going to be near seasonal mild Sunday. Breezy conditions, I don't necessarily think we're going to see those today. We could have gusts up to 15 to 20 miles per hour, but then over the weekend, those are going to die down at least a little bit. Our next decent chance of seeing some rain, this is going to come into Wednesday morning, and notice there are even yellows on this future track. So yes, we could even be talking about some heavy rain, and even some stronger storms, at least near the area. That'll take us into early morning hours of Halloween. I think we could still see morning showers on Halloween, but we should dry up if the timing of that cold front and the strong system that's going to affect several states, if that kind of leads up to the timing we're thinking right now, that will not affect the time for trick-or-treaters Thursday evening. But what's for sure, the temperature fall, almost 80 Tuesday, 75 Wednesday, and then 58 only on Thursday for Halloween. Chris. Yeah, and trick or treating on Thursday. Uh, a little chilly. Yeah, it could always chilly. be worse, I guess. There's no snow, so there's the silver lining. <laughs> We've right? got that. All right. Yeah. Thanks, Savannah. You're welcome. Time to see what's going on in the 608. That's right, it's UW Homecoming. Who could forget? Badgers are setting to take on third ranked Penn State tomorrow night under the lights at Camp Randall. Uh, Josh Breider all decked out this morning, talking about Phil in the Hill. Uh, one of my favorite traditions on campus, Josh. Hey, good morning, Chris. Yeah, this is a big tradition. We've been out here for many, many years, and I've got all the accessories this morning. I've got the official Fill the Hill fanny pack. I have a little friendship bracelet this morning. It's kind of hiding underneath my jacket, but now is your chance to be able to fill the hill for donations for the university. This goes all the way to the university's immediate needs, so we're going to fill the hill with flamingos. We also got to talk a little bit about homecoming itself. Winton Wright is with the UW Homecoming Committee. Winton, good morning to you. Good morning. So, happy homecoming. This has to be a long time coming for you guys because you've been gearing up for this for quite some time. Yeah, we start at the end of last semester and kind of go the whole summer to get all of our events put together and then so last push uh, the week coming up right before and then it, we kind of see it all come together the week of. So your goal obviously is to get everyone out here to have a good time and what are some of the things that you're going to have going on this weekend? Yeah, so this week so far we've had the Spirit Parade was on Tuesday with the band and then uh, the Wisconsin uh, uh, spirit squad and we have a bunch of other events like the game night and then the kickoff carnival and as well as the concert that was also hosted with the Wisconsin music you know this is so cool yeah. because it takes so many you know partners for you guys to be able to pull off a big weekend like this and this is such a special time for you especially as the students being involved yeah, it, it really is nice to see everything come together and see what we're able to put together for the campus and the community as well. So obviously now is the time folks can uh, go online, they can check out what you guys have going on and come on out and have a good weekend. Yes, absolutely. You can follow us at, at Wisco Hoco and see all of our events for future and then definitely come and see us for the parade today as well, which will be a lot of fun. Is there a way for folks to be able to support you guys and your mission moving forward? Yes, absolutely. As I just mentioned, Wisco Hoco is a great way on Instagram and then on Facebook as well and then just follow us. Uh, contact with us and then we can do a lot of fun things in the future as well. Awesome. Well, Winton, thank you so much and happy homecoming to you. Yeah, thank you. We appreciate it. And, you know, we do have a surprise guest here this morning. The News 3 now Badger mascot. No, it's not Bucky. We have Bascom. Bascom, come on in here. <laughs> 
Chris Stanford, we knew that we had to have Bascom here all out in the gear this morning. And of course, if Bascom's here, we also have Bascom's handler, <laughs> Miss Leah Lynchide, <laughs> making a surprise appearance this good morning. Leah, good morning to you. Oh, good to see you. You know I wouldn't miss an opportunity to hang out for UW Just homecoming. Stay away. This has been a tradition, obviously. I mean, you're a UW alum. And we started a tradition last year, and you had to make sure that we kept that going. So you what know, is that? What's the time here? Three quarters through the show, right? Let's here, do can it. You hold this for a second. I got Basco. Hmm. Oh boy. Let's see. Yeah, you're right. Three quarters. <laughs> <laughs> Come on in, everyone. Ready, Bass? It's time to jump around. <laughs> I think they're doing it back in the studio, too. I hope Savannah, Michelle, Renee are getting in there, too, Chris. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Josh Breider. You can learn more about UW Homecoming by going Baskin up to channel3000.com. <laughs> Look at that gang out there jumping around here at 649 in the morning. Fell in the hill with those pink flamingos. Thanks, Josh. Josh is always looking for inspiration to share in the 608. you have an idea for him, reach out and let him know about it. Well, happening tomorrow at homecoming, it is National Drug Take Back Day as well. The U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration encouraging people to properly dispose of unneeded drugs. It's to prevent them from falling into the wrong hands. There will be locations at Badger Homecoming this weekend to safely dispose of the drugs. We have a list of disposal sites at channel3000.com. Hey, and with the temperatures winding down, we're in the final stretch of our Coats for Kids campaign. Today, we are looking for some volunteers to help distribute those coats at Boys and Girls Clubs locations. Uh, so the event runs today from 9 this morning to 6 in the evening. The locations are in Fitchburg, Madison, and Sun Prairie. Exact addresses and details on how to get involved are all at channel3000.com. 6.50 coming up in the morning sprint. What might be worsening are allergies. If you got a little kiddo turning three soon, let us know so we can show their picture on TV. We'll be right back. Sponsored by Three Bears Resort, Indoor Water Park and Conference Center in Warrens, Wisconsin. During COVID, Joan Balwig took half a million dollars in federal loans she never paid back. Then voted to block assistance to help other Wisconsin businesses grow. Joan Balwig, out for herself, not you. Have you heard Eric Humpty? I am totally opposed to abortion. I am totally opposed to politicians telling women what we can do. Extremists all over the country have passed abortion bans. Criminal penalties for doctors. No exceptions for rape or incest. Women are dying just trying to get health care. There are even restrictions in Wisconsin. This has to stop. I am totally opposed to abortion. We are, are totally, totally opposed, opposed to Eric Humpty. I'm Tammy Baldwin, and I approve this message. Insanity. Doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. Would you have done something differently than President Biden during the past four years? Uh, there is not a thing that comes to mind. Kamala wouldn't change a thing. Their weakness invited wars, welfare for illegals, while Americans struggle. Now Kamala wants higher taxes on top of higher prices. We can't afford four more years of Kamala. I'm Donald J. Trump, and I approve this message. How extreme is Todd Novak? He thinks a woman's most private medical decisions should be up to him. Todd Novak has a 100% anti-abortion rating. He supports letting politicians ban abortion with no exceptions for rape, incest, or to save a woman's life. And Todd Novak authored the law to ban abortion here in Wisconsin. Elizabeth Grabe will defend abortion rights. She knows private medical decisions are between women and their doctors. Washington is corrupt. Senator Baldwin says she fights against Wall Street, and yet she lives with a Wall Street executive and gets all this money from Wall Street. She says she's standing up to Big Pharma and Big Tech, but look at the money she rakes in from Big Pharma, Big Tech, and their executives. Senator Baldwin doesn't work for you, she works for them. I'm Eric Hovde, I approve this message. I'm not taking their special interest money, I'll only work for you. For 54 years, they were trying to get Roe v. Wade terminated, and I did it. He did it. 
It was pretty devastating. He is bragging. Bragging about the rights that he stole from American women. And Trump is promising to do more. <sighs> In Project 2025, they are restricting birth control, tracking pregnant women, enforcing a nationwide abortion ban. The government should get out of my business. Stay out of my business. That's not the government's business. In America, women make their own decisions. I'm Kamala Harris, and I approve this message. This is China, and this is Wisconsin. Joan Balwig invested thousands of dollars in Chinese companies, but voted against using state funds to help grow companies here in Wisconsin. Joan Balwig, out for herself, not you. Forward Madison FC is in the playoffs. Tickets on sale now. 6.53, time for the morning sprint. Both presidential campaigns are blitzing through Wisconsin in the coming days. Former President Trump is set to visit Green Bay next week. He'll speak at the Rush Center Wednesday evening. That's two days after his running mate, J.D. Vance, visits Racine. And on Saturday, Secretary of Transportation Pete Buttigieg will visit several cities for the Harris Walls ticket. U.S. businesses say they're suffering from election uncertainty and that they could end up hurting the economy. Uncertainty among small business owners has reached an all-time high. That's over the 40 years in which the National Retail Federation, or National Federation of Independent Businesses has tracked this. They say the anxiety and uncertainty of the election has forced them into a holding pattern. Public Health Madison, Dane County, urging folks to throw out pizza from a local restaurant. The place in question is Famous Yeti's Pizza in Stoughton. Since Monday, the pizzeria served pizza contaminated with THC. Officials say the contamination was unintentional. Possible THC-related symptoms include dizziness, increased blood pressure, anxiety, vomiting, and sleepiness. McDonald's is now on the receiving end of a lawsuit. It regards the E. coli outbreak linked to the quarter pounder. One person is dead and dozens are sick from the outbreak. It includes at least one case in Wisconsin. The FDA says the beef patties or slivered onions are the likely source. The medical examiner's office identifying a man in a fatal fall from a boom truck. It happened in Rock County at the 4-H fairgrounds over the weekend. 59-year-old Timothy R. Gillitzer of Milton died Saturday morning. The death came from injuries sustained in a 10-foot fall. A 62-year-old Janesville woman also fell and survived. Eric and Lyle Menendez may face resentencing. The Los Angeles County District Attorney uh, will ask a judge today for that measure. The brothers were sentenced to life without parole for the 1989 killings of their parents in Beverly Hills. Uh, the District Attorney says that he believes that they have paid their debt to society, and if the judge approves, the brothers would be immediately eligible for parole. Climate change could be making our allergies worse. A study in Chicago found people are more sensitive to outdoor allergens now compared to 10 years ago. Studies authors say that this may be due to increased temperatures and rainfall. They say it's leading to worsening levels of pollens and mold. This weekend, it's homecoming at UW. Tonight is the big parade, so watch out for some road closures on the isthmus and give yourself some extra time. The parade route runs from Gilman Street at Wisconsin Avenue to State down to Lake Street. And temperatures will be on the cooler side tomorrow for the game, but tonight for the parade, not bad. In fact, we'll be actually down to the 50s only. Mid 50s by five, and then how about the 53 at six? Might be a little breezy though, might want a jacket or you know a light coat, but tomorrow for the game itself, probably more so. All right, thanks Savannah. You're welcome. We're back in 30 minutes. We'll leave you with a shot from Bascom Hill.